Welcome back to another episode of What Do I Know with me, Joanne Pei. And what I'm about to say right now is probably going to sound very boomerish. Uh, but we've got in our studio today our very first Generation Z guest. She's born in the year 2000 and is part of what some would call Singapore's version of the Beckhams. She's the only daughter, but not the only child, of Singapore's soccer legend Fandi Ahmad and South African model Wendy Jacobs. Well, she is, uh, she's been on shoots with her mom since a young age and she also went on to win two titles at the New Paper, New Face competition in 2014. So, it's really no surprise that she's a model today. But, do you know she's also a rising singer-songwriter? Now, that didn't quite run in the family. So, if you think that having famous parents gives her an advantage, well, maybe, maybe not... Let's hear it from Iman Fadi. Hi, Iman. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me uh, in this uh, small little place. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit uh, caught off guard because I've never had like a Generation Z guest in the <laughs> studio before. And um, I, I, I think it's important, right, that for us to be able to talk to different people and to learn also from mm -hmm. the young people. And with you, I guess, uh, the question that you probably get asked a lot is, your famous parents mm -hmm. and I, actually I get this question too because people ask me oh how do, how do your children feel mm -hmm. you know that you know you know that their parents are famous and all that and I, yeah. and I always tend to think that uh, I don't think they feel any different because they don't know any different mm -hmm. uh, but that's me right representing them to say it I guess now you can probably answer this question because <laughs> you know I'm curious too right like yeah what was it like growing up with famous parents? Like, did you even know that they were that famous? Not really, actually. <laughs> so, um, I used to live in Indonesia when I was younger. So my growing up ages were, when I was there, all I could rem remember was climbing up trees. Wow. You know, doing a lot of sports. So I knew that sports was somehow in my blood. And then when I moved back to Singapore when I was about 11, and I went into primary school, secondary school, that was when it kind of started, you know? Oh, like your brothers play football. Oh, you know your dad's like a a big name. And then when we would go to malls, that was when the pictures started or like the questions or the whispers. And slowly I began to understand, okay, something's up. Okay. Um, and I looked up my family. <laughs> <laughs> like Google. I actually did, yeah. I Googled and then that's how I learned a little bit more of what was happening here in Singapore and what my dad did and you know the legacy that he he brought for us all um, but to answer your question about how I feel you know being the daughter of these two amazing you know people um, yeah kind of similarly to how your kids would respond oh nothing not that much because it's something we've grown into something that we've only known yes you don't know otherwise yes exactly but I will say I feel very proud. I feel very, um, yeah, I feel very proud to be in this family, to have a family that's so supportive with such a big name also comes a lot of pressure. Mm. So it, it can be both good and bad, but it depends on how I myself, you know, carry myself and also um, try to live up to that, but also be my myself at the same time i've also always wondered how my children feel but they are probably a little bit too young to articulate that like, how mm -hmm. do they feel when you know we are out in public sometimes and you know someone comes to us and asks for a photo or people are like pointing and chattering yeah. how, how did do you remember how you felt at when first, you were not very familiar with what was going on and then all that was happening yeah so at first i was quite weirded out by it i was like oh why are random people it's just you know i was young uh, why are they just taking pictures? But then I somehow enjoyed it when I was younger because I, I guess because my mom was a model and I've always been into very curious about fashion and, you know, to see a camera, I'm like, okay. Oh. Um, but then in my teens, that was when I started to not really like it, actually. Oh. Yeah, I think it was just because I was trying to figure myself out 
and I want a little privacy sometimes. And mm. when you can't get that, it can feel a little bit scary in a sense. And mm. then the only place that I can feel private privacy is probably in my home. But I want to be like everybody else and enjoy going out with friends. Enjoy, you know, going to the mall, having dinner with my with my family without having pictures taken. But I mean, it comes with you know, everything that my parents have done. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's also very pressurizing when you are, well, the daughter of famous parents and mm -hmm. good-looking parents too. Mm -hmm. And then there's always this, I don't know, this pressure. Do you ever feel like people will be like, oh, you know, are, 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 like, are, are the kids good-looking? And like, mm -hmm. you know, is the daughter beautiful? Mm -hmm. And do you ever feel that sort of pressure, like that, that yeah. you have to look good and you got to be a certain way? Of course, I felt that pressure. And I don't think it also just goes down to the looks, but also of what we do. Mm. Does it live up to what my parents did? Mm. You know, so a lot of that I still carry now because even, you know, being in the social media industry and also with technology all around, people will talk, people will say what they want to say. Mm. But um, and that can, you know, get to me. But it also depends on how I take that and turn it into a positive and try to ignore it. But yeah, I do feel the pressure of, oh no, am I doing enough? And I still feel that to this day, even though I'm doing so many things. Mm -hmm. um, I still feel, oh no, I think something else could be better. Something more needs to be done. Yeah. Have you got a specific example of something that happened to you that you feel like, you know, terrible about? And then how did you overcome that? I think uh, this mm -hmm. happened a lot, like uh, where I was trying to figure myself out. And a lot of hate actually came when I was between 12 and 14, 15. Oh, dear. And that was where I was also trying to navigate. Oh, my gosh, what do I do? And this was when I was in secondary school. So what sort of hate was it? It was a lot of, yeah, oh, you're just the daughter of, you know, Fandi Ahmad. Like, oh. you, you got this because of him. You're here because of him. Oh. And that was actually part of the reason i joined the new paper new face all right it was something that i was very interested in mm -hmm. first of all but also um, besides doing my track and field because i was a track and field athlete at that time i wanted to dive into the fashion industry and i did it myself in a way that i signed up didn't think that i would get in and when i got in i told my mom actually and she didn't believe me until I showed her that I got the call back for the audition. And we went together and that's how it kind of started. Okay, this is now how I'm going to take my steps. I'm going to do everything by myself right. and then show my parents. And that was actually how my music industry, uh, how I came into the career uh, started as well. I hid the music. Um, I hid what I was doing just because I didn't want to feel that they were the ones putting me there or in a way to show people that I was doing this by myself first. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, people I, will say what they want to say. Exactly. And I, I guess before we go there, I kind of am curious about your childhood because you mentioned that you were in Indonesia and you mm -hmm. were climbing trees and all that. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. Like how long were you there for? And mm. I was there for four years and all I could remember was just being a child. You know, it was it was one of the happiest times I would feel um, in my early childhood days. I just remember going out with friends, not caring about anything, just being a child, having fun, going to school. I would always stay back in school mm. just to play around. How many siblings did you have then? Four, four brothers. Oh, for already four all, brothers. Already all, four, yeah. all five of you were there. All five of us, yeah. But of course, all of us were younger. And that was also our closest times as a family, I feel. Oh. Yeah. Because How now everybody's, you know, grown up, have work overseas and in and out of the house. Yeah. How long were you there for? Four years. Four years. And yeah. then... You're, you you said that you know you were in track and field after mm -hmm. that like did any of that you know tree climbing i don't know river swimming <laughs> sort of helped you or was it actually your father's influence track and field honestly i don't know how i got into track and field it must have been some kind of like pe thing and then all of a sudden i was into track and field um but sports has always been something that um i've always liked 
Yeah, so I'm not sure if that was a genetic thing or just an interest, mm. but my whole family just enjoys sports. So, did, do you all play sports together? What did, I mean, I, I guess what I what I'm curious about is whether your dad sort of dragged everybody <laughs> and like, okay, we let's go kick balls or let's go do something, you know, yeah. on a certain day. Like, I mean, I feel like that has happened for sure a lot of times because I remember um, when we just came back to Singapore or maybe we were here for a holiday, we went to play futsal. Uh -huh. East Coast and we would always ride bikes there too um, so I remember just like going on family day outs doing that or maybe swimming you know in our swimming pool we will always be active on, right. on, when we can on the weekend as a family as a family yeah um, but football was one thing that we were all interested in because I used to play as well and oh. I remember my dad was helping out here and there with the coach um, for the girls team uh, in Indonesia yeah. I, I have no ball sense. <laughs> I feel like football is one of those like the really tough sport really? for me. Really? Yeah. I mean, like if it's netball, anything with my hands, ah. I, I feel like I can control it, okay. right? But anything with my legs, I'm just like, it's not <laughs> going where I want it to go. Yeah. Yeah. So football is a is a to me it's a hard sport. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, you know what is it? Is it is it hard or is it just I I don't. It's I, just I, a sport to me, I guess. Right. It comes naturally. I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, so it, I guess everyone in your family too, right? Isn't yeah. it? Your brothers are in yeah. in soccer now. Mm -hmm. So then, I I heard a little bird tell me that you've been on a cover with your mom at the age of like seven. Mm -hmm. I think it was called Family Magazine or Mother Magazine. I don't know, but I I have the cover on my phone actually. I have a picture of it. Was that your first photo shoot? I'm not sure, but I think so. But it was or with my other brother as well. Or your first impression of, like your first memory of a photo shoot. I don't remember anything <laughs> from that shoot, honestly. Yeah, but it was a really, really, um, you know, something so memorable. When when I have shoots with my family, I always think it's nice to have pictures with them because we don't take a lot ourselves. It's called Family Magazine. Let me see. Oh, this is the one. You were seven. Yeah, I think so. Because that was the youngest that I could could find. Wow. Yeah. And that's your brother? That's my younger brother, Ilhan. Well, your mom's really strong to carry both of you. <laughs> <laughs> because this little bird also told me that you, you were a natural at that age. Did, did you know? Were you aware? Did anyone say it to you? I don't think so. I, didn't, I, I mean, I didn't know. You didn't know that you were a natural? I didn't know, yeah. Mm. But when I got older, I started going to more shoots um, and my mom would come along sometimes she would be joining as well um, and I think that's when I start to learn mm. to learn how what is my angles what do I like what do I not like in you know the fashion photo shoot world um, but I just loved everything would you yeah. say that your first foray into modeling is after new paper new face yeah I would say that my first independent move into it was was when I was 14 and that started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, I mean, now you're still a model and we know that a lot has changed, right? Mm -hmm. Since your mom was a model. And I think um, some of the practices have also improved. Like, were you aware? Like, did your mom ever give you any advice? Were you aware of the, the difference in the modeling practices then and now? Mm -hmm. um, definitely, because my mom would always, before a shoot, she would always um, tell me, and my my dad too no matter what industry I'm, I'm in always be humble respect everybody no matter what position they are even if they're you know helping you know to clean the building and you walk past them just smile um and yeah the i think something that he really stressed on was also just be humble remember where you came from because mm. um everybody is just trying to be you know themselves have a good time and um Oh, my mom always said, always be on time. And that is something I carry with me all the time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, the modeling industry can be very <laughs> cruel mm -hmm. and tough, mm -hmm. right? Because, uh, I mean, I've heard, I've, I've, I've also interviewed uh, Fiona, Fiona mm -hmm. Fusey from uh, in season one. Yeah. And, you know, she talked about the auditions that she had to go to and, um, you know, how, how, how models yeah. are being treated, right? Uh, what 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 is it like for you 
Mm, I remember. Have you always had great experiences, or was there any? No, you know, no, yeah. no, no, no. Any any stories to share? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, there is a huge difference from how things were before and how things are now, and it can be from the models mm-hmm. or also from the um, you know the photographers or the creators around uh, what the spread would look like. And yeah, in the modeling industry, I've had great moments, a great team that I'm very fortunate you know, to have great experiences. But there has been a couple that has been quite Mm -hmm. (laughs) eye-opening, if I may put it nicely. Um, Because I remember going to this audition and I wasn't a skinny girl and I'm not tall, Mm. you know. And I think everybody else there were tall models, Mm. um, uh, more of them were light skinned I would say and I believe that I probably didn't get the job mm. just because I was a little bit more bulky I was more more of an athletic built and that's how I started to tell the difference between how the modeling in- industry is starting to change from then and now because now we see people of different color different race different body builds and that's amazing and mm. different skin conditions too Mm. Um, yeah, and I'm so grateful for that. But of course, sometimes, I mean, this one time, there's also photographers that you don't know um, the intentions. And that is something you always have to be careful of. Mm. I, and that's what I've learned, you know, working with people, m- meeting models, talking to models as well, of how... Um, things can change. So what yeah. advice would you give for someone, you know, younger who wants to enter the industry and be a model mm-hmm. in would, this day and age, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. This day and age, I feel like it's a little bit better just because everybody, you know, is, is more aware. Mm-hmm. And with social media, there's always things popping up, news, and that's how we kind of like keep up with what's happening. Um, but, you know, if you want to be a model, you want to go into the fashion industry, go for it. Just do your research, you know, make sure you have the right support system because it can be also um, quite grueling, not just because of the industry, but I feel that I hurt myself a little bit sometimes when I get too deep. When I was younger and getting into it so much and at and at such a young age, I didn't realize the toll that it would take on me mentally and mm-hmm. physically mm-hmm. and that's when i knew that i needed the support from friends or just learning a little bit more about the industry and the other side that it's not just you know tall skinny models but also hey there's another side where everybody ex- is accepted mm. because i started to look at myself and be like okay why am i not like this why am i not tall why am i not good enough mm. yeah But I believe that right now things have changed and um, that's amazing. Mm. So the advice that you would give to young, uh, well, aspiring models would be to have more confidence? Yeah, have have confidence. In how they are? Have have support. I would say whether it's people in the industry and they know the work, um, you know, that's great. But also there's support out of the industry. If something goes wrong or if something... You know, or if you don't, you start to feel that you're uncomfortable. Um, you have support outside of the industry to give you a clearer, like mindset or a different perspective. I mm. feel like that always helps. You know, yeah. the the challenge is always, I I feel for someone who has never been in the industry, for example, to to be able to assess a situation and and draw the line between what is professional and what is not okay. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes uh, when when you're young and then you enter, let's say you go for a photo shoot, right? And then the photographer asks you to do something. Mm-hmm. You're like, is that, am I not being professional mm-hmm. if I say no? Yeah. Right? But you, you don't know where the boundary is. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I guess that is the difficult part. And that's also the part where I worry if I were to have my daughter says she want to yeah. go modeling, right? That... You know, how, how do you protect yourself? How do you know where to draw the line? Mm-hmm. And that fear, right, of losing the job if you say no, because yeah. just because you're uncomfortable and whether and whether this discomfort that you're feeling is you being unprofessional 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah, do, you, yeah, do, you, I, do you relate to that? I, I've relate, I, I can relate to that definitely. But I feel that right now, if you feel that way, you know, always be sure of what you want um, and go for what you want. And if you believe that something doesn't feel right and you should say no, step in and say no because you have a voice too. Mm. You know, um, I understand that this is a job, but many other jobs are going to come along the way and with people that will accept you and with people who will listen to you because just because you're a model doesn't mean that you should not be heard you should be heard too and you should be um, accepted and respected just Mm -hmm. like everybody else working i think for me personally i would feel that regardless of what what job it is if you're uncomfortable and and perhaps this discomfort is you being unprofessional mm. even if it is mm-hmm. right that well actually you shouldn't you shouldn't be uncomfortable with this let's see mm-hmm. right uh, that you know we, we should all also learn to respect that emotion and that feeling yeah. that the person is having instead of judge this person and go like okay then in that case yeah. i'm not going to use you next time yeah. right like it, sometimes it's also about educating people and 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 allowing them a chance to Make mistakes. It could be a mistake, right? Today, whatever I'm, I'm experiencing, I'm saying no to this because I'm uncomfortable. Uh, perhaps it's not the right thing right now, but I learn, right, as I go mm-hmm. along. And, yeah. I, and I think uh, this is also the advice I would give to young girls, you know, who are coming into the industry is that not to be afraid to lose the job. Mm-hmm. Because like yeah. you said, you know, you, lo- you lose this one job, but have faith, right? That Yeah, there'll be other there'll jobs. There'll be other jobs that come. Exactly. And I love what you said about, you know, learning more because as you say no or as you turn down a job or whatever it is, you will start to know what you like and what you agree with and what you're comfortable with as Mm. well. And, you know, whether you turn up and you didn't know it was a swimsuit shoot, let's (laughs) say, um, and you feel uncomfortable, okay, then, you know, next time, maybe you don't want to do swimsuit. Or maybe you ask before you... Yeah, or maybe you ask before you show up. Yeah. Yeah. Have, Have you ever had to learn it the hard way? Not really. I mean, usually when we do shoots, I do like to find out what it's for, where it's going to be used, what am I doing. Um, But I would say at the auditions, Mm -hmm. sometimes you never know um, what can be expected. You know, we're we're all, uh, we all usually give our headshots and all that, but sometimes we have to go down and Mm -hmm. do like an audition, which is just basically standing there, greeting. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're just an ornament? In modeling? Especially, yeah. In modeling. I try not to feel that way. I I used to have that thought of like, oh, what if people just think we're mannequins, you know, and we have no yeah. um, creativity and you're like being like that. In a way, objectified, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you, f- like, do you ever feel, I don't know, angry or like any emotion about that? Or, or have you ever felt that way, in fact? I honestly don't feel like i have felt mm-hmm. that way mm-hmm. and i th- i think this is also this just shows the difference between how the industry was mm-hmm. and how the industry is right now because i'm so grateful that i've been in the industry that's been very accepting of everybody although that it has its ups and downs mm-hmm. you know um i've never felt objectified mm-hmm. in that way mm-hmm. sure Maybe once or twice, but nothing that I can pinpoint and be like, "Oh my gosh, no, I'm never doing that again." Mm. Yeah. Where did you get? Where do you get your support from? You, you talk friends, about that support network, mm, right? So yeah, friends that are actually outside of the industry, because mm. they allow me to see a different perspective, and mm. they allow me to to also see that hey, if this is not working out, and it sounds like maybe it's not working out, and you're having a hard time, there's another world out there. Yeah. Mm. And and that's why that's what I mean by support. You know, you want to have every support that you can get, whether it's your friends outside of the industry, in the industry, your family, your manager, maybe your mentor. Do you ever feel like people just want to be friends with you because of who you are? <laughs> I mean, I'm a fan of your dad or I'm a fan of your mom. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. I want to hang out with you because I mm-hmm. want to you know get close to them yeah and and i learned that the hard way actually so i learned that when i was in secondary school so those were the years that i was learning a lot about myself and about people and about my family and i think that's what made me who i am today because i was able to fall get back up and learn okay so you know you know who you are 
but there'll be people that will take advantage of take that. advantage yeah i mean people tend to think that you have it easy you know you you've got famous parents to do this and mm-hmm. then you know you it's what um the hollywood term uh, nepo babies mm-hmm. have you heard of that yeah. term yes yes <laughs> uh, so so that's the thing that you know i i personally i guess because i also have children <laughs> and i and i would think that you know I, I don't want this to happen to them yeah and i i worry too for them and mm-hmm. you know ha- have your parents ever told you how they feel or like their fears about you know you this? all of you growing up in the in the limelight in that sense i don't believe they have you know specifically like sat us down or anything like that but all they've told us is just to be who we are and mm. they are so supportive in whatever we do mm. so just their parenting was good enough to show us that hey we can do whatever we want as long as we respect people as long as we have the you know all the values of a person that wants to work hard and wants to be kind to everybody and mm. you know just um i just want to say that for those people that do talk about us you know or your children and and assume that we have everything easy i try to think of it that we're we're born into a life that we cannot really choose you know and all of us have different advantages and dis- disadvantages and all we can do is to try to make the best out of it and i know sometimes yeah some people may seem that they're more successful but they might be hiding something or they might be suffering uh, in something that we don't know and mm. whatever we see on the screens or whatever we hear in you know the audios um those are just parts of their life mm. yeah I've always wondered what it's like having so many children. <laughs> I mean, five. five. And then you're like, I have two and I'm just like, as, as a parent, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know. And, and, and sometimes I, I think I, or for, for many of us who have fewer children, we, we want the best for them. So we focus a lot of attention on, on each child. Mm-hmm. But when you have five, it's quite impossible to be able to devote the, same kind of energy and attention to each and every one and you being sort of smack in the middle right <laughs> yeah have you ever suffered from the middle child syndrome so that is the a great question because i've gotten that so many times <laughs> but i feel that i can relate to it to an extent but at the same time no like like i can't relate to it because mm. i am the only girl mm. being in the middle so being the only girl also puts a different limelight. Right. Puts a different pressure, right. I would say, also. Because um, I feel that my brothers can do whatever they want and not get criticized for it. But whatever I do, it's like... Da, 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 da. <laughs> really? Like yeah. what? I feel... Uh, I mean, I will say, of course, parents will always be protective of... Um, you know a daughter so i feel that that is always will always be there but from an outsider coming into my family i feel that i have more pressure Mm. in a in a way yeah to to be good to do good to be a certain way and to uphold my entire family is is that self-inflicted or did your parents that's the thing (laughs) or like your parents actually said something to you or no 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 i think i'm very critical of myself and i've learned that but yeah i i realize i'm very critical myself but uh and i used to care a lot about what people said but i try not to sucks that Um, sucks i mean i do too (laughs) i i used to i mean at 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 your age Mm -hmm. I, I too, you know, you, you get very lost mm-hmm. and you get very scared. Yeah. And then especially when you're, you know, doing what you do, mm-hmm. uh, it seems like other people's opinions matter. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and, it's, and, and you growing up in the world of social media and YouTube and all this, mm. I, I imagine it's worse. Yeah, sometimes like, I feel like I want to throw my phone away. Like I, my dream, honestly, is to just live buy a beach house like get a beach house live by the beach have my family there with my cats <laughs> don't you think it's contradicting <laughs> because you you want to be anonymous or in mm-hmm. that sense but yet the work that you do yes you exactly. know like you you need to 
be yeah. famous, I guess, right? To be able mm. to do the work that you do. Yeah. And you need to be seen and you need to be heard. Yeah. So isn't it very conflicting? It is very conflicting. And that is the thing when it comes to what I love doing is like fashion and, you know, music and just like being yeah i guess being in front of the camera right but my private life sometimes i just wish i could be in a beach house <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i feel the same way yeah you know but you can never get best of both worlds yes. you know we can try yeah but like you say that in this world of instagram youtube social media um it will all have to somehow be out there. Yeah. If I feel like if people ask you if you have Instagram and you say no, that's a weird thing now. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, you don't have Instagram. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what's I mean, what's the generation after you going to be? Like, have you ever thought about what it's no going to be idea. like for your kids? I know. Have you? I'm going to raise them in a beach house. For, for real? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that why your parents brought you to Indonesia? Brought, brought the whole family to Indonesia? No, because my dad had a job offer there. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. You want to raise your kids in a beach house. But, I mean, that's <laughs> just something that I want. But what I want now is different. You know, uh, we all want different things. and But how I want my future to be is like that. How the future will be for my kids, we're not sure yet. Mm. Um, all we can do is try to make it better. Mm. I mean, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you, just now we were talking about your support group and all that. So what about your romantic interest? Is there mm. a romantic interest in your life? Yes. Oh, okay. On two days ago, it oh. was our one year anniversary. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I think this is one of those questions that I, p p you, you must get as well, right? Like I actually don't. You don't. <laughs> so when it comes to my relationship, people can. I'm okay with people asking, um, but people don't ask a lot. But when they find out I, I, I am seeing somebody, then like, wow. You know, back in the day, I mean, during my time, it's gonna sound so boomerish again. During my time, right, <laughs> where you don't have like social media and mm. camera phones, and you know, you could. You could have a boyfriend and say that, oh, this is my good friend. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever finds out, right? Because, you know, nobody takes photos, nobody uploads it, and yeah. nobody sees you holding hands and doing stuff. But then now it's impossible. Like, if you if you're, if you go on a date, like, where can you go? It's Singapore, right? You, you can't go on a date and not have anyone see you. So, yeah. so it, it is a little bit more open now. Mm-hmm. Uh, to a certain extent, I feel that because it's so open that people like no are no longer interested. So I don't know. Oh. I mean, I don't know how it's like for you uh, at at this mm -hmm. at this age and in yeah. during this time of camera phones and all that and social media that you know you you feel like there's nothing to hide already. Mm -hmm. Right, I, back in the day, like everybody's like trying to hide something, keep try, a secret, yeah. right? And then now it's like now it's a different kind of hiding. Okay, tell, tell me about okay. this world of yours because so. <laughs> I'm obviously like, you know, I talk about you being the first generation Z and I think there will be listeners who are curious too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. how you were mentioning about the hiding and, you know, you, you're calling your the your guy boyfriend. you're seeing yeah. as a friend first. So that was, I guess, in your time, as you say, <laughs> but in nowadays, and I've done this before and I did it also um, with my current boyfriend. So... When we're kind of talking to somebody, I mean, if you guys can relate, then that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, when I was talking with my boyfriend in the beginning stages, I would keep it a down low. Uh -huh. Kind of like how you mentioned hiding it. But we sneak pictures. So it's like hinting. It's People call it soft launching. <laughs> <laughs> soft launching. So when... It's like you talk to them as much as you can and you hide it. But when you're ready to mm -hmm. put it out there uh -huh. and say, okay, I am officially talking to somebody, whether or not they're exclusive or not, to say that you're officially talking to one person, um, they would people would just usually sneak launch. I mean, slowly launch. So take a picture, 
but covering the face. Ah. Uh, and this would happen for like two weeks, three weeks. And then people would start like, oh my gosh, who's that? Oh my gosh, you see somebody. And then you launch it on the main post. Okay. And and I mean, I guess at this age, sometimes you see some someone and then it doesn't quite work out. And then mm-hmm. you, you switch your boyfriend. I mean, you meet someone else mm-hmm. and all that. I mean, is it is it like okay now? I mean, like back in the day, I mean, again, I'm going to sound so old, but it's like, you know, you, 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 you have one boyfriend and you're expected to marry this guy, right? Uh. I mean, has that changed now? <laughs> Are people more um, accepting of the fact that, hey, as a young person, you, you know, you meet different yeah. people, you know, yeah. you don't stick to one all the time. Yeah, it, it's more accepting. Um, I'm, I feel like some cultures will probably still have that, okay, you meet one person, you're going to marry them. But... Um, Nowadays, I feel that everybody is accepting of like, okay, this is your boyfriend, and they understand that Sometimes it things may don't or may work not, out. yeah, it may or may not happen into marriage or anything, and you know, you might get another boyfriend or girlfriend, and that's okay. Mm. And I actually prefer this in a way because it allows you to understand what love is. It under it allows you to also understand what you like in a relationship what you don't like in a relationship and i feel that relationships are a great place for you to learn Mm. and to grow because Mm. the other person can teach you so much yeah so then let's talk about your relationships like where do you meet your boyfriends i mean being in your industry Mm -hmm. i guess like i would assume you meet them within your industry no no. what no, no, i mean because no, no, i'm married no, no. to one who's in the industry <laughs> right so what so, do you mean so i've only had wow i'm putting this out there <laughs> <laughs> so i've only had two boyfriends oh and my first boyfriend um was when i was 18 okay and it wasn't because of any rules or anything like that i was just i was just trying to figure myself out first and i met him when i was in la Mm. So he was my first boyfriend. I met him in LA. He was American and we were doing long distance. Um, unfortunately, that didn't work out, but we ended on good terms. Long distance. How yes. does that work? I've Communication went... is key. Like how? Like FaceTime? What, what, I, I don't know. Yeah. FaceTime, do scheduled calls. So And w- it's like a different time zone. Yeah. So that's oh that's the God. hard part. So my current boyfriend, um, I met him actually a while ago. Okay. He used to actually train with my brothers, but I didn't know this. And my dad used to train him. Um, And then only last year, 2021, we started to talk as friends and reconnect. And that was how my current relationship started. Um, But he's in the UK. So we have long distance again. Wow. And... Yeah, communication is key. Do phone calls whenever you can, but also have your own space for both of you to grow. And um, what we also talk about is that I believe that if you really love somebody, you know that you should be willing to try. To try long distance, even if it doesn't work out, don't let the, don't let the what ifs kind of like pull you down to not even try it. Yeah. Okay, so we assume that the hardest part about long distance relationships is, I guess, not being the phys- physically yeah. there. And a lot of my friends actually worry that if they find somebody and that person, you know, leaves and it becomes a long distance relationship, they somehow for sure know it's not going to work out. But for me, I'm like, why not? You've never done it before. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is something I cannot wrap my mind around because I... Have you been in I, a long distance? I wouldn't call it long distance. I mean, my husband, for a time after we got together, he worked in China. Mm-hmm. And then we also didn't quite get to see each other all, all the time, right? I mean, we, we do your... um, we, we In China, they use the Weixin. So you use WeChat. Oh, yes. And WeChat. then you do your, 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 face t- like your FaceTime calls and all that. But I mean, we're in the same time zone, so it's still okay. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, if he's filming, you can only do it after work and, and I got to do it after work. And back then, I, I found that it was it was good in a sense because you, you make an effort to communicate uh, mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. Right. Because you, you set a time and then you, you meet, you call and then you have that scheduled call all the time yes. and then you you are connecting. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, 
and then now that he's back, you know, and then sometimes you don't even get to see each other. Oh. I mean, I, I noticed that. Because, you know, he works too late and, I, you know, my timing is different. And, mm -hmm. and you don't have the time to sort of sit down and just talk to each mm -hmm. other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I did find that, hey, you know, back then, we actually had a lot more to talk about than now because mm -hmm. we're physically here together. Yeah. But I have to admit that there were times, especially after having kids, that when he was not here, it was hard because, you know, you need that physical presence. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, now that you're asking me this question, I think it's more for the kids. His physical presence for the kids, mm -hmm. right? But you're okay with not having the physical presence? I mean, I was. And then until... Because after we got married, this happened, right? So yeah. you don't know otherwise. Mm -hmm. And then now that he's back, and 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 I'm so reliant on him being here now that I don't know what it's going to be like if he has to go. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like back then, um, because of the way we were, we got together and then he was already... Mm -hmm. We already had this sort of a relationship. Then I, I, I felt like I was okay. And then, uh, but I did notice that the children would sort of be a little bit, um, have a little bit of tantrums or mm -hmm. it, it's just a little bit different when he's not around. And then when he comes back and then when he leaves for, you know, he comes back for a week and then he leaves, uh, the children also, they do yeah. act up. And now that after with COVID, right, and he's back here and then, you know, th we are all so used to having him. I'm not sure I can do the long distance. I mean, it is <sighs> when you are with someone for a long time before my my boyfriend um well his name is josh okay so before josh left to go back to the uk he was actually here so i was so used to him being here for almost nine months or so and right. so used to seeing him on the weekends you know going on dates or family right like dinners and stuff and when he left yeah i was like oh my gosh i lost like a part of me yeah. like it has that feeling <laughs> And now I don't know what to do with myself. Um, but slowly with time, you start to learn and have your routine of like, okay, being alone again or like just doing your own thing again. And the exciting part comes the next time you meet. Yes. The planning for the next time you meet. And I find this always the most fun because when you meet, you have so much to talk about. Yeah. And then it kind of like, it, it kind of like sparks that, relationship up again it's yes. like having a little date and both of you start to have those flutters of like oh i'm nervous i'm seeing her or him again and you make it's the time so count yes. isn't it because exactly. you have so little time together and you want to make it mean mm -hmm. something right and you don't want to you don't care about the bad times or the fights or the disagreements anymore because the both of you have the same idea of just wanting to see each other and sometimes the fights, the disagreements, the arguments stem from just missing each other. Mm, yeah. Mm. I, I mean, hearing from you now, I think it's giving pe some people a little bit more courage not to be resistant to the idea of I mean, of just go for it. You know, just <laughs> go ahead because you never know what's going to happen. It might just lead into something beautiful and you never know if you don't try. You know, the interesting thing is I actually had a physiotherapist who married her boyfriend, like, long distance. Like, all they've ever had was long distance relationship. And, mm -hmm. they, and they got married. And at, at that time, I remember, I was just like, how? And right? I've known, uh, I, I know some friends that do long distance for five years, haven't seen each other within the COVID period as well, and got married. And, like, to stay committed to each other yeah. throughout this time, I think it's also, I guess... It takes a lot of gut. <laughs> And a lot of um, love, yeah, isn't it? And, and I guess discipline too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, discipline. Okay, so has your romantic partners ever influenced you in the work that you do? They give me inspiration to write songs. Okay, <laughs> let's go into this songwriting part because, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, I, I talked about in my introduction mm -hmm. is that, uh, well, it's no surprise you're a model, but, you know, songwriting, singing is not... It doesn't. It didn't run in the family, mm -hmm. and so to do something like that takes a lot of guts and courage, and yeah. and, and and you you making it happen for yourself. I was so scared. So how, tell us about how it all started. I mean, I'm sure you've said mm -hmm. this story before, but I I, I want to hear it myself. Like okay, so it started as a 19 year old. Eh? 
Yeah, nineteen year old birthday resolution. Oh. So I've always loved music, you know, all different kinds of genres and when I turned at nineteen, or I think just before I turned nineteen, I told myself, why not record just for fun one of the songs that I wrote? And that actually happened to be Time Frame, mm. my first single that I put out. So I went to a studio that I knew through some friends, um, and they were the first people that helped me in the music industry. Um, Estelle Fly, uh, she was one of the musicians that I looked up to at that time. Yao was also um, with me at that time. He's a amazing musician and songwriter. And when I was going to put out the song, I just asked a lot of people, okay, how am I going to put it out? Do I want to put it out? Because initially I was just going to keep it for myself. But then I thought, why not? Just put it out just for fun. And someone from Universal got a hold of the song. And Wait, um, hang on. Did you already put it out? No, I hadn't put it out because I was asking people like, what oh. should I do with it? So you've already recorded it? I've recorded it, yeah. And then it's just sort of sitting there yeah, in somebody's hard disks. In my right. heart. in your hard disk, <laughs> okay. So no one has heard it except for the people no. who helped you record it. Yes. Okay, and then and then I was like, should I put it out? Should I not? And Universal got a hold of it, and I didn't expect things to start rolling. From there, it began like, okay, let's talk about the music. See how you want to put it out. Okay, let's talk about a contract. Okay, do you want to get signed? And everything just went by so quickly that I signed with Universal. And I put out time frame, and that's how it started. Yeah. How did the song get to the people from in Universal? So I knew uh, Nikki, who used to work at Universal. Um, she was a friend that I met, I believe, at an event, and um, that's how it got to people. Wow, this is really like putting it, you know, like sending the message yeah. to the universe, sort of a thing, because. I guess for like even like Lady Gaga, the way she was discovered is she actually had to put her music out first, mm -hmm. and then you know someone hears yeah. it and picks but it. But I was not. I honestly did not have the intention of making it big, just because I didn't think that I could. Um, and when I asked for Nikki's advice and like, what should I? How should I put it out? Like, what do I do with this now? Because there's so many you know logistics behind putting out music on YouTube or Spotify. Mm. And yeah, then from there, Universal got a hold of it. And I was like, what? Oh, so tell me about the process. I know you wrote the song in a taxi. Yes. That's the, 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 the you know, I read that in your interview. Mm -hmm. And then you had a melody. And, 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 and then how, what happens? Okay, you have a melody, you have, you have the lyrics, then... Then I wrote it down. Okay. And then I find the BPM. So that BPM is beats per minute. And that's how you start to produce a track. Um, yeah, so you kind of like have to, you know, use tracks, production, uh, work with your producer and make the song from that BPM. Mm, so aside from writing uh, lyrics, it, do, have you always enjoyed writing? Yeah, I've always enjoyed writing when it, uh, when it, when I have inspiration, because sometimes I get writer's block and it can be such a pain. Um, but yeah, I've always enjoyed writing, but I realized I love being in the studio, just helping to produce as well. Because on my other songs that I'm currently working on, I love helping um, my producer, like, okay, uh, which beats, which keys, what should we do, experimental things. It's always a fun, it's always like a fun playground for me because you just start to learn so much about music and the different areas that you can dive into. Do you play any instruments? So I used to play the triangle <laughs> <laughs> in primary school. And then I used to play the guitar ah. in secondary school, but I forgot. And then I self-taught myself the keyboard, oh. but I stopped. Oh. Yeah. So now you... No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> it's very interesting because I always assume that in order to write your own songs, you gotta kind of like no. know how to play an instrument. I just feel like you just gotta have whatever creativity is in your brain and just put it out there. Yeah, um, you know, I feel music can come from a lot of things, and just because you don't uh, play an instrument doesn't mean that you can't make music in your head. 
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense. It does. It's just I'm wondering where you get your inspiration from. A or where of, you get your sounds from. A lot of um, inspiration comes from, I mean, for writing, it comes from things that I see, people that I talk to, but the sound and the melody just comes randomly. It's hard to explain, but it's just like, maybe you have a melody in your head right now. and mm. Yeah. You just got to embrace it. So I know you said that just now earlier on that you actually did this on your own without telling your parents. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it was also a way to sort of prove yeah. that you to can do things on your own without their help. Yeah. And prove to myself that, hey, whatever other people are saying, um, you don't have to listen to them because you're making your own steps, you know, into the future. And I guess I want to prove to them and prove to myself. And so when we released Time Frame, we had a press conference and I invited my parents and that's when they saw how big the whole music career um, direction for me was going. You mean you signed on with Universal without them knowing? Well, I have my godfather with me by my side throughout the entire thing. He's kind of like my second dad. Oh, yeah. So um, you, you, are, you are no longer a minor then, right? I, I suppose I was it, cause it, 19 you need you need an adult yeah to sign you need, the contract you need to be you. 21 to be yeah so right? my godfather was there so he kept it a secret too from your he, dad he, oh the great part was he's the person that I would go to to drop hints for my family so that they don't get a shock right but when I tell them then they're like oh no wonder you've been going out so much or like coming back late going to the studio um yeah I see. So <laughs> it all happened, and um, how 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 do you feel that where this is going for you? I feel it like it's just the beginning mm. because I'm only about two years into my music career or so, and there's still so much to do mm. with me becoming an artist in COVID. Unfortunately, you know it was bad timing, mm. but because things are starting to open up, I can't wait to do shows. Um, I've, I've done a couple shows already and it's just so exciting, the feel, the feeling and the thrill of it. And I want to do things overseas, more collaborations and to put out an album in the future. So you, now you're still modeling and then you, you know, you have your music career and you still do YouTube videos? And I do YouTube videos when I can. Yeah, I have this series called Iman Tries. Oh, tell us about so that. So it's just about me doing a, a bunch of different things that I've never done before or that I've never done in a while. So I did um, rock climbing, bo bouldering, wake surfing, um, and some, oh, uh, bungee jumping. <gasps> oh, my yeah. the one at Sentosa? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So I've done quite a lot of things and hope that will be a series that I hope to continue and try different things. Oh, why, why do you want to try different things? Because I feel that I'm such an adventurous person mm. that I love to try new things anyways. And I hope that these series can either provide people, um, you know, of things of what they can do or to give them inspiration of like, let's just do it. Let's just take the risk and try it because life is sh so short. I feel that you should do whatever you want to do um, that makes you happy, but also what challenges you and scares you because you never know the thrill of it all. Like doing the bungee jump, I was so scared. But after that, I just felt a huge rush of adrenaline and I wanted to do it again. And I would never have done it if I didn't have my best friend to, who I did it with, but also to have this push of like, Iman, you're filming a YouTube video, do it. <laughs> Wow, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so is there anything that you, like, right now, that it still scares you that you haven't tried yet? That's the thing. Um, I feel like I am scared of things like maybe insects. I say, like, I say I'm not, but I could be. That's the thing. Like, right. I could be scared of jumping out of an airplane, but right. I could not be scared, if that makes sense. Wow. I don't know what I'm scared of until it happens, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, but I know I'm scared of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> that's, don't, one, that's one thing I'm scared of. They don't exist. You don't believe in ghosts? I don't. Oh. Have you met any? I don't know. 
<laughs> I mean, you you, wow. can't, you can't be scared of something that you've never met, right? I Maybe mean, I have met a ghost before, but I just believe that spirits exist. So that scares me, you know. Yeah, I mean, not in the good spirits. Okay, hello. <laughs> um, but the scary ones, yeah. I've heard a lot of stories. That's all. That's why. Oh, I see. Yeah. Because I've, I, I, I mean, it's not that I don't believe. I do also believe that there are spirits and all that. It's just, uh, I, yeah. That's why I say, I have never done a horror like horror film, film before. I think I don't know how to be scared of ghosts. Like if I have to act scared of like ghosts, I don't know how to do it because. I, I've never had that experience. Have Have you gone to um, Halloween Horror Nights? I have, but oh. the kind of jump scares are like, I mean, jump scares. I get scared, right? Mm-hmm. So you like yeah. you know you, you you get startled, but that's, but you know the kind of horror films, uh, especially the thighs are really good at it, and it's oh, the right. kind that the, the lurks in and, like Indonesia, right? So that kind of and when you're acting, obviously it's not real. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I, I think that's a genre of film that I or of, of TV show as well that I've never tried and I don't know if I'll be any good at it. Mm. But let's say you were sleeping and a ghost just like stands in front of your bed. Would you not be scared? I, I don't know what that is like, <laughs> you see, because I never experienced so, it. Before. So that's the thing of like, you don't know if you're scared until you're there. Right, yes, yeah. yes. So it, it's kind of the same thing with me with other things and it's a lot of it is your imagination too right because you're imagining imagining and then it seems to happen yeah and i guess i never put myself in that position where i would imagine these things i guess so i have a wild imagination so maybe that's why i wonder where that came from i i don't know i have weird dreams too so yeah (laughs) Hmm. you know i look at you and i think that you're so brave and you know, you're so willing to try things and like you talk about this bungee jumping. Like, I would, I, I I guess if there was a TV show now that asked me to do it, I'll probably say, uh, can I not do it? I mean, we all have fears. And of course, I was, I was like double checking everything. I asked them, did anything happen? I asked them, am I locked in? Is my friend locked in? What is the, mm. what is, what happens if it does snap and will we fall into the water? You know, I, I do think about the what ifs Mm. and to prepare myself Mm. but that can only do so much i guess i'm not in that mental space right Mm -hmm. so i'm oh i'm just curious because i'm looking at your generation and seeing so much courage and bravery and especially because you 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 are growing up in a in an in a world where anything is possible right Mm -hmm. uh with youtube with this with that you can make anything happen so it it feels almost like Nothing scares you. Your mm-hmm. generation of of, yeah. of of young people, right? Like you're gonna like just set the world on fire. The kind of the kind of feeling I get. Yeah. What is something that worries you? I think to I mean to give you an answer that isn't so obvious. To me, I feel that something that I am scared of, at least a little bit, is to be alone. Mm. Yeah. To what do you mean? It doesn't feel like you're alone, isn't it? You've got like your no, followers and your fans. That is the thing because you can feel lo- alone or lonely in a place filled with people. Mm. You and for you to not be alone is if people understand you, if if people accept you, mm. if people respect you. Um, and I feel with so much happening in the world, and we're always moving and doing the next thing, and um, social media, like you say, is just everywhere. How do we know if we're really conne- connecting with people? Because we are connecting with them virtually, mm-hmm. but on a you know heart to heart basis, I feel like sometimes that connection is just not the same. Yeah, and and I guess that is why um, I keep my friends very close to me because they they show me just a different world. Yeah. Before we wrap up, I do want you to share a little bit more about your belief in mental health and wellness because mm-hmm. you did say that it's a very big part of what you believe in. And, um, you know, you're, how do you stay, I guess, mentally and physically healthy? So this has been a learning journey for me because, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, being in the fashion industry at such a young age, it did take a toll on my mental health. 
and my you know well-being and that's when i started to dive a little bit deeper into okay what do i do how do i take care of myself and um, i studied psychology Mm -hmm. and i have a degree in it and that's when um, i took an internship at this nonprofit organization called impart to help children youths and that is where i also learned a lot that in Singapore, we only see one side of things. There are so many children and youths out there who don't have the lives that we have, yet we are complaining about it. Mm. But uh, yet they push through a lot. And how my journey started with mental health just began out of my own own curiosity of how to be better. And I also feel that it is such a big thing right now because with a lot of things happening with work and with travels with social media the only thing that sometimes i can control is how i react to things how can i be better in uh you know being me yeah Yeah. so what do you do then Mm -hmm. like what do you do so you know that it's important to you but then like is there any um thing that you practice so exercise i know this is very um cliche but (laughs) yeah exercise is an outlet but sometimes that doesn't work yes you know um our emotions bottle up and then i start to think oh no exercise is not working what do i do and that's when i always say tomorrow's a new day or monday's a new week and so i give this let's say a week of my time to of this time to feel the emotions cry it out if i need to be um down if i need be and then when i'm starting to slowly feel better take the little steps you know okay have a good breakfast have a good smoothie go for a walk and then start the monday fresh those i know it's not a huge impact of like okay next day next next day i'm perfect but it takes a lot of um i feel resi- resilience to push yourself into a better place and of course i love listening to jay shetty ah. um, he's on spotify podcast a lot about mental health and well-being yeah i feel like he's my therapist <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. in terms of diet as well like do you think that plays a part yeah i definitely do because i realized this is so random but when i cut out fast foods or at least a little bit because i still have some mm-hmm. um it did play an impact on how I felt after eating mm. because I used to feel a little bit more sluggish and lazy, but now I feel like I have the energy for the whole day. But you're a vegan, isn't it? So I used to be a vegan, oh. but now I'm pescatarian. Okay, yeah. tell us a little bit more. Like what's Because when I hear that you're a vegan, I'm wondering, like, does that mean that you don't use leather bags, you can't wear leather clothes mm-hmm. and... And when you're a model, I guess it's hard, yeah. right, to, to, yeah. to have that, to make that choice. So when I was vegan, how I transitioned was, first of all, I never really liked chicken or meat. And a friend of mine showed me documentaries and she was right. a vegan. And that's how it started, <laughs> <laughs> the documentaries. And yes. I love animals. So, yeah, that's how it started. And, yeah, I mean, in the fashion industries, I cannot just say, no, I don't want to wear fur because I'm a vegan. Yeah. Um, but there are different types of vegans i feel but i try to separate my my work and my belief uh of like my vegan veganism um in that sense because i am doing a job in a sense but what i do at home is my lifestyle right right but i went out of veganism because um i realized parts of my uh, nutrition wasn't up to par because when i was in paris there wasn't a lot of food options at that time and so i just thought okay maybe just have a fish and that's when it started and i became pescatarian and pescatarian means that pescatarian means that i just eat fish rice you can have dairy and cheese but i still keep those out Mm. yeah so i'm a vegan but i eat fish (laughs) Right. I mean, I I think it's important this diet as well. And for me, I my uh, according to my blood type, I'm mm-hmm. supposed to be vegetarian. Oh, 
ideally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just means that if we consume like vegetables and no meat, our mm-hmm. bodies function more efficiently than other blood types. So I also did notice uh, with uh, that choice that I make, if I were to eat more vegetables and to have a, like a plant-based diet, that I feel a lot better. I get a lot mm-hmm. more energy. Yeah, I think my skin's better. Everything's better. Uh, but then I find that it can be really difficult to it is difficult. To, to execute. Yeah, you know, and especially if you're traveling and this yeah. and that. And that was the trouble that I was having as well. But I mean, now there are so many vegan options, which is great. Really? But, yeah. I, I feel like if you go on the airplane, you can just choose the vegetarian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not always yummy, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's more options, I would say, compared to a couple of years ago. And that was when I was vegan and suffering with, like, the decisions. Yes. Because I, I feel that maybe, you know, when you would go out with family, you would have, like, the hard decision or being the person that's like, okay, I'm vegan or vegetarian. I can't eat at this place. Um, it, it, it would always feel so hard and i and you like don't want to and yeah you don't want to yeah. be trouble to your friends who like exactly. arrange for yeah. a gathering and then you're like oh sorry yeah. Yeah, i don't eat this i don't yeah. eat that and i feel that no matter what you eat or where your diet is everybody is different so you you can be a vegan some days i've heard people doing mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you can be you know a meat eater all the time but have specific diets you know yeah uh, so i've got a friend who is a vegetarian every thursday yeah <laughs> and um thanksgiving is also thursdays right so mm-hmm. i'm like sorry but there's no mock turkey uh, <laughs> so it's like it's everybody has their own decision yes, their own yeah. life what works for them will work for them yes well it's been great talking to you and you. i guess uh, before you go uh, we want to know what's upcoming for you so i am working on my music and I am definitely hoping to release them soon, uh, hopefully after Chinese New Year, if that's a little bit more specific for you guys. Okay. Um, and I am working on an EP as well. But before that, I hope to put out more singles. And next year, I am also um, planning to do a little bit more fashion stuff, maybe some work in Fashion Week. Um, we'll see about that. And more Iman tries will hopefully be coming as well. All right. So if people are interested to find out more about you and your work, where can they find you? You can find me at imanfandi17 on Instagram and then imanfandi on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. What other social media? Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) Facebook is like for the boomers. But everybody still needs Facebook in a sense. It's where you get the invites. (laughs) Oh, really? Of like... um, friend invites oh like, really? yeah my boyfriend still does that everyone's yeah. just telling me that facebook is like you know if you're on facebook it represents the generation like your generation is like no longer on facebook i still but <laughs> facebook is connected to instagram so all right it's been so fun chatting with you but unfortunately we've come to the end of this episode please remember to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you'll never miss a single episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, know that there's an audio version on Spotify and guess what? There's also a video version on Spotify now. Yay! Well, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much, Iman. Thank you for having me. Bye! Bye!